Konnichiwa! Ni hao! I know it's been a while, but I'm here to give you my trip update. And I've been trying to record when there's no sound or limited sound. And as you can tell, there's noise in the background. And I just got to the point where I'm like, I just gotta do the video. And I don't care what noise in the background. Even my cat who likes to meow a lot or scratch on the scratching post or the washing machine that's running. You know what? We just gonna do this. All right, let's get going. So I have two sections to this video, one that's about Japan and the other that's about China. And for the most part, I had a very good time eating vegan over there. Now I did have some mistakes and I will talk about those at the end of each section and you'll see what I mean. So in Japan and China, I had very little cell service, practically nothing. Maybe only at the hotel that I was in. When I was in Japan, the hotel provided a phone that I could call with, I could use the internet with, I could download apps on, and it was awesome. Show a picture of it, it's called Handy, and this particular hotel provided it. I don't know if all hotels provide it, but it helped me a lot to figure out uh, what I can eat in Japan. So what I ended up doing was I downloaded Happy Cow onto that phone and I used it to get around uh, to vegan places. And I didn't always find 100% vegan places, but I found a significant amount. I had to order food, obviously, right? This is what this whole video is about. And I did have some challenges with the language barrier, obviously, because I don't know Japanese. I know a couple words and phrases, that's it. Uh, it was very limited other than that. The word for vegetarian is vegetarian. Yes, it was very easy, so I remembered it. <laughs> uh, so when I was talking to them and trying to order food, I either uh, said vegetarian or I showed them a uh, picture, a screenshot from my phone of a translation of the word vegan in Japanese. And if one didn't work, I used the other. So when I was in China, uh, me and my husband were there total 10 days or nine days. And uh, two or three of those days, we were completely alone. Uh, the rest of the time we had friends that we were with but the time that we were alone, what I did in order to communicate to people what I, what I could eat was I had a screenshot from my phone that said everything. It said, I can't, I don't eat meat, I don't eat cheese, I don't eat butter, I don't eat milk, I don't eat fish, blah, 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 the whole thing. It was in Chinese, so I could just show that to the server and then, uh, try to get something from that. I didn't know any Chinese words for these items. And if I had said it in Chinese, I don't know if they would have understood me. I had a translator app that worked sometimes. And then that's about it as far as me trying to communicate with them. But then when me and my husband got to the point where we were with our friends in China, who knew Chinese, it was pretty much all taken care of for us. Um, Cause they knew all of the things that I needed and it made it that much easier because they would call restaurants ahead of time. They would make sure everything is vegetables or fruit and it's cooked in vegetables and not lard, which is common in China. And so they were a complete lifesaver. Now let's start with Tokyo. If you've ever been to Tokyo, you know the transportation system, the beautiful gardens, the temples and shrines, the beautiful parks everywhere, and the very interesting things they have like this. And, um, if you've been to the robot show, you'll know that this looks like it came straight out of the kid's imagination. Now 
let's get going. Now I eat at 7-Eleven every day I was there for breakfast. And uh, these are everywhere. I don't think I saw really even one regular grocery store. So this was helpful. I usually had bananas and apples and uh, they're pretty cheap. Then I had this rice ball with beans in it, which is really tasty. And then I brought my food back to the hotel and had this coffee. And why do they not have this coffee bag in the US? Come on, seriously, it's in a bag. Now I had this vegan ramen, as you can see in this picture, uh, twice for lunch. And it was so good, better than any ramen place I had here. And I had some sushi, this is a cucumber roll and a vegetable roll. I actually found a Denny's and I uh, got this salad thing and it was kind of a disaster and it was not very good. And so I also had these fries, but not this sauce. And then another time I had fries at uh, KFC. So one day I had only fruit for dinner because you know what? Options. And uh, I had this, found this vegan place called Sojo. And this is their menu, which was freaking awesome. And they are all vegan based. This is what I ate. It's a whole bunch of stuff. You can see what it is, but you know, there's tofu at the top, there's brown rice, there's miso, there's a uh, salad, some soybeans, some ginger. This is a egg roll with um, soy sauce and mustard as the sauce, which was really good. Um, and this is somewhere else, but this is edamame that I ate because I didn't have any options. This is a vegetarian place I found called Cafe VG. And this is what I ate. It was a soy burger and uh, fries in a salad. Really tasty. Hey guys. It's that time where I tell you the things I did wrong in Japan. So I don't like this part, but the truth is I'm not perfect. And I did make mistakes when I was there. And you know what, I gotta own up to that and tell you what those are. And I can only think of two instances where I made a mistake. So the first thing is for breakfast, I went to 7-Eleven I got this rice patty thing and there was some sort of vegetable and I don't remember what it was. I have a picture somewhere, I don't know where it is right now. And I didn't realize till after I ate it a couple times that it had egg in it. Now there was no egg visible in it. And so you're wondering how did I know that there was egg in it? Because on my translator app that I had on my phone whenever it happened to work. I, uh, it has a feature where you take a picture and it translates from whatever language you want to English. And in the ingredients, it said egg binder. And I'm like, oh my goodness. Uh, okay. So next thing is for dinner. Me and my husband were trying to go to um, this vegan restaurant, but the, when we got there, it was, it was closed. So we went to a nearby burger place. This is not already indication where this is going. Uh, I went up to the lady at the cashier and I said, vegetarian, right? Like I said before, and I was like, well, hmm? Eh? Like trying to give a hint like, okay, what can I have? So she pointed at something on the menu and it, it was something soy patty related. So I was like, okay, let's try this. And when I got it, when I got it, it was a big piece of iceberg lettuce with a soy patty inside and some cream stuff on it, inside it too. And I'm like, y'all, I don't know what this stuff is, but I was hungry, it was like 10 o'clock at night, 11 o'clock at night, and so I just scraped all that cream stuff off and just ate the rest. And then I went somewhere else and had edamame. It was not a great dinner, 
sometimes you make mistakes and you know what? You gotta own up to it and learn from it. So don't go to a burger place if you can. Now let's talk about China, because I know you're wondering. Vegan in China. If you've ever heard of China, you know they're pretty famous for their tea that they make and their jade that they produce, but also for their beautifully constructed gardens, natural beauty. Markets that they have in the rich culture. Boat rides that are expensive. Interesting people. A new technology, bullet trains. And just beautiful architecture. And who can forget the Great Wall of China? Buy this shirt. Breakfast. Pretty much every day I had fruit. This was on the bullet train. And I also had this on the bullet train, only the two right ones, uh, green peas and fruit snacks. I normally had watermelon, pineapple, dragon fruit every day and a bunch of it. Uh, only on this particular day I had vegetables. Lunch. So lunch in China is served family style, also dinner is like this too, where all of the dishes are in the middle and you just pick off what you want. And it took a little bit of getting used to, but I enjoyed having it this way. It was fun. And then when I went to a restaurant sometimes, this is what they did, they put our utensils, uh, cups and stuff in saran wrap for sanitary purposes. Here is one of the dishes I had, it was tofu and sauce. I don't know what the sauce is, but they said it was veggie. Here is a spiralized potato. Here are some sweet potatoes, which are about a fourth of the size that they are here in the US, but they taste the same and I enjoyed it. Here is black rice and y'all, black rice is how rice is supposed to be. White rice is actually bleached black rice. But this was uh, sticky and a little bit sweet, it was good. And now you see here on the left that's actually Chinese celery and uh, on the right is cucumber. And I'll pan up to some bamboo which was so freaking good. I don't know what they put on this but it was like crack. It was delicious. Now here is watermelon vine. I know that sounds weird but it's from a watermelon vine and they saute it and it kind of tastes like um, a mixture of spinach and green onions. And when this sautés, you see that there's red sauce at the bottom? That was trippy. And they assured me that it was watermelon wine. Anyways, here is sweet potato thing, and this tasted gross. Don't order it. At least it tasted gross to me. So now there was a Starbucks in the middle of a park. And this is their menu, and they have things written in English also, which is very convenient. And I actually ordered in English to the cashier. They had all of the plant-based milks. There was no issues. And what I actually ended up getting was a cappuccino with almond milk, and then I added some brown sugar to it. And it was top notch, guys. Now here is uh, one of the dishes I had. On the top left is a uh, tofu, and then you've got white rice. And then that big bowl is a vegetable soup, which was kind of slimy and gross. And then underneath is uh, more of the Chinese celery, and I'll pop up a picture so you kind of see what it looks like. But Chinese celery looks like a mixture of green onion and American celery. It was weird. And then here is a food that I got from a food court. It is uh, some sort of sweet potato or something, starch or flour in the noodles. It was spicy. And then you have these nuts around the edge. And then I'm going to scroll up and I also had this... I also had this kiwi smoothie which was so good. Now for dinner. So when we first got to China, 
Uh, we got to the hotel and we were really tired and we didn't really have a chance to go anywhere. So we ended up eating at the hotel with room service and I had this nice plate of delicious fruit. And I also had this minestrone soup, which was really watery, but it was all right. The fruit made up for it. And this is what it looks like on the menu. And it actually is labeled vegetarian and it's 50 yuan, which is 739 US dollars. And then uh, another day I had this plate of bamboo, bok choy and mushrooms. And it was actually really good. I was surprised how this was, and this was at the hotel also. This is kind of a spread of a bunch of stuff I ate, and I'm gonna go more into it. Here's the fruit salad, which you can see what's in it, but it also had a dragon fruit, which I know is, you know, is not very common in the US, at least to me. And then I had this lime drink with a cool curly straw that I could drink out of. And then this dish was actually, uh, this is fries that are in the shape of circles and then it had chicken nuggets with it. And it took a lot of convincing uh, to tell the server to not add the nuggets. So they eventually gave it to us correctly, but it was hard. Here's a nice, beautiful salad. And these last couple things I've had all in one meal and I was really stuffed, but they just kept feeding me. This too. This is, you know, broccoli with uh, mushrooms. And yeah, and then this was a different time, but this is corn, which is something I don't ever see, have not ever really seen here. And then the black rice and the garlic. Okay, there is a pizza hut in China and it is not considered fast food. It's more of a sit down, nice restaurant with these crazy booth seats and have full service. And this is everything that I ate. I had the fruit salad. We had the um, different types of fries, regular and sweet potato, and then the salad in the back with, there was oil in the middle, but I was like, ah, I didn't want to eat it. So. And then here is a grapefruit drink with actual grapefruits in it and it tasted really good. Afterwards we went to a karaoke bar and they had this fruit as a spread which was so good and beautiful. And then here is some lonely celery by itself which was, I enjoyed it. So I took this picture but I didn't eat any of what was pictured here. On the left is jackfruit that is cut up already, and on the right is durian. And I didn't have any, but I wanted to sh show this picture because I thought it was cool that this fruit stand was in the middle of a air, air conditioned mall. What I actually came to the mall for was hot pot, which is where you cook your food in the middle of the table. And as you can see, the one on the right side is mine, which is the vegan one, the other one's not unfortunately, um, but it was a mushroom based soup and then it had bamboo in it, had tofu, it had sweet potato noodles and it was really good. I had to wear this bib in order to have it because it was very messy. And then we left and we went to a dessert place where I had this dessert which had coconut and fruit in it and tapioca balls. And then another day, my tour guide managed to help me find this place called Lohas Time, which was a completely plant-based restaurant. And here is some of their menu. They had a lot of things that I have never seen anywhere else, like this, which is heresium mushrooms, which are actually grown on trees. And it was good, it was roasted, it was spicy. I would have it again. And then I also had this, which is a celery with some peppers and black fungus mushroom. It was kind of weird, honestly. And then here is a tofu skin in rolls, which it was like an egg roll, but it wasn't crispy. So it was kind of like, eh, I'm not sure about this. But this dessert was awesome. 
It was a cashew cream pastry with cashews inside and also I think there's some sort of like almond butter or something in it. It was delicious. So let's find out what I did wrong in China. So one time me and my husband went to this Peking duck place because that's where he wanted to go and he's not vegan. That's a story for another time, but we went and I didn't know what to order. So I saw something that looked like vegetables and then I asked my server um, if it had meat in it or whatever. And so I, I showed the screenshot at the very beginning of this video where um, it says, you know, I don't eat meat, fish, whatever. And so he brought out something that I picked on the menu that I asked him if I could have it. I was like, well, point at this. Can I have it? Show on my phone. And then they're like, okay. Uh, so they brought me out a soup, a vegetable soup. And I had one sip of that and spit it out and had no more of it. Now, I don't know what duck tastes like, but it did not taste vegetable based at all. It tasted like it was meat and I was not happy with it. And I think, you know, when they, they didn't understand that I meant that I wanted no meat at all, not even in the broth. So I tried to explain that to them the best I could through the multiple servers that came to my table and try to f help me figure things out. But eventually uh, they brought me something which tasted fine. You know, it was just vegetables that were sauteed. So other than that, there was two instances, two other instances where I ate the same thing. Um, one was a dumpling and a, another one was a bao. And they both are basically dumplings. They just shaped a little bit differently. And they both had egg in them. And at that time I was with the tour guide for one of those instances. The other time it was my own fault. So as you can see, although I did have some mix-ups and missed uh, interpretations in me getting vegan food while I was there, overall, I did pretty good. And like I said in the video before, um, I was regular. You know, I pooped at least twice a day, sometimes three times, and it was healthy poop. Not like y'all wanna know about that, but, you know, it, it went well. You know, there was only a couple instances where it didn't go well, but it was, um, you know, the next time I went, it was fine. And I ate mostly fruits and vegetables and all of the noodles and stuff they had, it was vegetable-based. Like, it was made out of sweet potato or it was made out of some other vegetable. And, it was a really enlightening experience and I had food that I never thought I would have had before and I really enjoyed myself and I would recommend if you do go to China or Japan that you do try to have a tour guide for at least one day in each city wherever you're at because that experience really helped me significantly because when I was China in China most of the time I did have it, someone helping and it made the experience so much better because I didn't have to think about it so although I liked both Japan and China I feel like I had better food in China because I had help in Japan we were completely by ourselves and I feel like it could have been so much better if I had prepared more, if I had learned more Japanese and although it was a good experience with good people uh, uh, food in China was, was better. So thank you for joining me and seeing what I had overseas and I hope there's more videos like this to come and sorry it took so incredibly long to finish this video you know I was just there's no real excuse for it, I was just being lazy. You will be seeing more from me more regularly like it was before and 
I already have a couple more videos lined up, so I hope you're ready to watch more Millie. Sayonara! Zai Jen.